there, Shadrach. Well, I'm better than you be from the looks of you. Sergeant Autry, sir. Lieutenant Mason. You were in a bad way there, Sergeant. What brings you out here alone? How's the water situation, Shadrach? The champ and I are a little beat. On a special detail for Major Farrell, sir. Were those Indians in force? Probably quite a few of them. But they won't bother you, sir. They were just trying to keep me from getting through. The lieutenant's new to this outfit, isn't he? Yes, I'm new to this command. But I still expect the sergeant to face me and stand at attention when I'm asking him questions. I'm sorry, sir. The champ and I have been trying to keep ahead of those Apaches since daybreak and we're thirsty. Well, I still... It's like my horse has bad manners too, sir. You're under arrest. Corporal, take his pistol. That won't be necessary, sir. I shot up all my caps before your patrol came along. With the grossest violation of regulations. I'd pull you off that horse and thrash the manners into you. I'll waive the regulations, sir. But it might not be wise in front of these men. I trot! Hard! Ha! I'll take a report on your patrol in writing later, Mr. Mason. Now, what's this about putting Captain Autry under arrest? Major Farrell, did, did you say Captain Autry? I did. Late captain in Jeb Stewart's Cavalry Corps. He enlisted in this regiment after he was mustered out of the Confederate Army. Now, what'd you arrest him for? Well, I, well you see, sir, I... Stop I... stuttering! What'd he arrest you for, Gene? I didn't face him and come to attention while I was answering his questions, sir. Why? Well, Champ and I have been dodging Apaches since sunup. I thought it better that we have water and talk at the same time. Hmm. Good reasoning for a cavalryman. Did you tell Mr. Mason that uh, you were under special detail for me? Yes, sir. Mr. Mason, it's obvious that you're an officer determined on discipline. It's equally obvious that you're a fool. In strictest confidence, I can tell you that Autry is no longer in the army. He was discharged in order to take over a most important matter for the Chief of Indian Affairs. I didn't know that, sir. Well, uh, now that you do, uh, what do you suggest as punishment? Nothing, sir. You said something about a thrashing and manners. I still think I can teach you some. I'm sorry, sir. Don't be. From now on, it's all unofficial, if that helps you any. And there isn't any furniture here I particularly care about. You know something? Ever since I was a cadet, I've wanted to whip a captain. And especially a Confederate captain. Yeah, and ever since I've been an enlisted man, I've wanted to punch a second lieutenant. Any second lieutenant. Now, 
I'll give every man here ten days extra stable police, including you, Shadrach Jones, if I ever hear that you mention a word of this. Now get out of here. Have you ever passed the corner of Fourth and Grand, where a bit of water rhythm has a shoe shine stand? People gather round and they clap their hands. He's a great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga shoe shine boy. He charges you a nickel just to shine one shoe. He makes the oldest kind of leather look like new. You feel as though you want to dance when he gets through. He's a great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga shoe shine boy. It's a wonder that the rag don't tear the way he makes it pop. You ought to see him fan the air with his hoppity hippity 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 hop. He opens up for business when the clock strikes nine. He likes to get them early when they're feeling fine. Everybody gets a little rise and shine with a great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga shoe shine boy. Yes, sir. Go break up that song festival and tell Sergeant Autry I'd like a report. Yes, sir. He opens up for business when the clock strikes nine. He likes to get them early when they're feeling fine. Everybody gets a little rise and shine with a great big bundle of joy. He pops a boogie woogie rag, the Chattanooga shoe shine boy. Shoe shine boy. Chattanooga shoe shine boy. The old man wants you, Sarge. And if you ain't there by five minutes ago, you'll have him to whip. Carry on, fellas, and see you later. Sergeant Autry reporting, sir. It is. <laughs> Knuckle sore? Well, a little bit, yes, sir. Here's my report on the parlay with the Apache chief, sir. I'll look it over carefully and forward to Washington later. Just, uh, just give me the highlights. Well, Major, it's like I've said all along. The chiefs don't want these raids and killings any more than the Army does. They know it means eventual defeat. Why don't they put a stop to it, then? Well, they can't. The young braves are restless, and they think we're exhausted from fighting each other. And they're so near right, it hurts. The Apache kids promise the young warriors greater victories when they get guns. And he's getting them. How? Well, the old chiefs say they don't know. And I believe him. The Apache kid, yeah, I've heard of him. Do you know him? Yes, sir, he used to be a courier of mine. He's part Indian and part white. All bad. He's not the ignorant border breed. He calls himself Johnny Corday. In some Apache dialects, Corday means revenge. Hey, you know a lot about the Apaches, don't you, Gene? Well, I ought to. I've been a blood brother of the Chiricahua Apaches since I was 18. I know about that. Saved the chief's life, didn't you? Yes, sir. And you're convinced that this uh, Johnny Revenge, this Apache kid, is the man responsible for this Indian trouble? Yes, sir. Well, I finally convinced uh, Washington that your belief in a renegade Indian being at the bottom of all this is well-founded. You were discharged as of three days ago and assigned to the Chief of Indian Affairs. You're to call on me for any assistance that I can give you, which will probably be precious little. Thank you. Well, uh, where do you start? Apache Springs. Johnny. Good to see you again. Hey, you've had enough gun practice for one day, I winged it. Looks like they had you set up for a killing. Well, some friends of mine. 
There was a little difference of opinion about some cattle. They don't seem to pay much attention around here to gunplay. This is Apache Springs, where you make your own law. And I'm the Apache kid. You haven't changed much since the old days, Captain. They tell me you're in the Blue Army now. You can forget that, Captain. I'm not in the Army anymore. Why did you quit? I thought all soldiers liked to shoot Indians. Well, this is no way to meet after battles fought together. Come on, we'll celebrate. Hey, kid. Raylan's back and he wants to see you right away. Our celebration will have to wait. Will you be here long? I don't know yet. I'm meeting a friend of mine here. If we find this is good cattle country, we may stick around a while. You better talk to me about that before you decide. Thought you never would get here. I was getting worried. I took us a shack, but the rent's due tomorrow, and I ain't got no money. What'd you do with the money I gave you? Well, they don't play poker for pebbles in there. I told you not to play poker. So you did. You always told me that, but I had to see if this game was honest. Was it? I don't know. They cleaned me out so quick, I didn't have time to find out. <laughs> had to put up my saddle for eating money. You know what a fool looks like. I certainly do. I can see myself in the looking glass, can I? All right, let's go see what this wigwam you rented looks like. Come on. Well, here it is, the neatest little wiki up in town. Oh, not bad, not bad. What are these? Well, you know how it is. A feller like me misses a soft touch of women in his life. I call them my tack-up girls. What do you think of them? Well, you've gotten to the point I can't think. Sit down. Outside of playing sucker poker and cutting out paper dolls, what else you been doing? Listening, mostly. Hear anything besides that soft little buzzing in your head? Well, that bothers me some, but from what I hear, your Apache friend kid rides pretty high around here. And he ain't alone, neither. Who's with him? A lot of fellers, both white and red, that cactus wouldn't scratch. One of them in particular. All right, keep talking. Maybe I'll find out who he is in a day or two. Feller by the name of Raidler. Raidler? Kurt Raidler. And if half of what they say is true, the Apache kid is just a jackrabbit for being tough. He's the man who sent for the kid. Huh. Pity. Pity to waste such a blade on this forsaken frontier. This should be hanging in my castle on the Danube. They never will. You were thrown out of the Austrian army and Quantrell's guerrillas over here because you were too careless about who you used your blades on. Now put them away and tell me about this Colton head. Direct. Always direct. But I suppose that is the savage in you. If you call me a savage again, I'll take that away from you and cut your throat with it. <laughs> I guess you would at that. <laughs> this man Colton, he intends to operate a cattle ranch in Hidden Valley. Oh, he does? Oh, yes. He has had the land scouted and uh, he likes it. So do we. He is a man of determination. By now, he is two or three days from here with 500 head of the finest stock I have ever seen. It uh, would be a pity if he were to succeed. How big an outfit has he got? I do not know the exact number, but it is a substantial one. That's what I'll have. How's he coming? In easy stages along Silver River. And then, wait. I'll, uh, draw you a map. <laughs> Make it a map of the Danube. I forgot more about this country than you'll ever know. I can even tell you where you'll turn south into the desert for the short jump to the next water. Adios. But why so soon? I thought there was plenty of time. Not too much. You see, my savages are camped quite a ways out. I'll see you when it's over.
hadn't have seen the Apache kid with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe there was such a fella. He's dropped plumb off the face of the earth, and what we're doing, gallivanting around outside of nowhere for I don't know. Well, maybe you're right, Sadrat. We'll turn back. Good. Hey, Sadrat. What do you make of this? It's engines, all right. Every one of them horses was barefooted. It's a war party. There's no travel at tracks. That means there's no women or kids. How old do you make it? Not so old we can't join them if we hurry. Oh, I've been expecting that to happen for weeks. Why didn't you buy a new one? I never thought of it. Guess I'll have to use my belt. Use your gun belt. That'll hold your pants up. Oh, use your hat to hush up your mouth. It's too loose. My mouth? Yeah, no, my, my gun belt. Oh, don't sit there bedeviling a man. Go catch them Indians. I'll follow you. That buzzing in your head finally caught up with you. It ain't my head that bothered me, it's the other end. My pants kept falling off, so I just took them off. I'm Jim Colton. Ooh, what's he made up for? Oh, this is a friend of mine, Shadrach Jones. I'm Gene Autry. Well, I'm mighty glad to know you. If you hadn't done my thinking for me, those steers would have wound up in Mexico. I'm sure grateful. Is this the first pair of long handled drawers you ever seen? I'm gonna borrow a belt from one of the cowboys. Shadrach's really saying he had a little pants trouble down the line where we found some Indian signs. I figured there might be trouble, so I trailed along. 
Where are you heading for? Apache Springs. I aim to start a spread in Hidden Valley, uh, just west of there. Why, that's Indian territory, Mr. Colton. Yes, I knew that before we started out. It sort of had me worried a little about my daughter. But she says, go ahead, Daddy. She's the go-ahead kind, so we started out. We? Oui? Is she along? Yes, yeah, she's up ahead with the chuck wagon, making night camp. Uh, I'd admire to have you take Chuck with us. Be glad to. Right. Miss Melody, when my ma used to catch me staring into the fire like you're doing, she used to thump me on the noggin with a thimble. She was a great thimble thumper, Ma was. Said I was listening to fire devils. Are you listening to any fire devils? <laughs> no, Shadrach. No, I was, I was just thinking how wonderful those cowboys really are. Just a few hours ago, they were fighting a stampede in an Indian raid. Now they're singing as though it never happened. Shucks, they do the same thing again tomorrow. Ruckuses like that keep us men limbered up. <laughs> When the campfire is low on the prairie And my branding is done for the day Then I sit by the fire on the prairie And I dream of my love far away when I talk to my dreams in the embers, I'll be waiting, the dream seems to say. When the campfire is low on the prairie, then I dream of my love far away. When I talk to my dreams... Check the night herd, Jim. We've got the stock pinned in a box canyon with a rope barrier across both ends and four men are riding it. They're as safe as in church. Thanks, Andy. When the campfire is low on the prairie, then I dream of my love Far away. How about a little ring around the rosy, boys? Yeah! yeah. Well, get idea. your heifer brands on and come on out in the open so we can do it. Dearie, may I have the pleasure of this next dance? That ain't no way to behave at a dance. And don't get gay with a lady. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna do the yelling? I will. Well, get with it then, and mind you keep your pants on. There's a lady present. And I'm in left with a right and left brand. Grab your honey and go on again. Make your own and promenade all. Promenade to a hole in the wall. First couple out, couple on the right. Around that couple, take a little peek. Back to the center and swing your sweet. If the body swing, first couple out, couple on the right, circle four, halfway round. Inside arch, outside under, inside arch, outside under, inside arch, outside under, back to the center. If the body swing. I ever heard that bird call before. Oh, that's probably just a night red bird. Oh. I was hoping we was rid of them. Somebody wants this herd of Colton's awful bad. Circle around to the east and be careful and don't stampede the remuda. I've been around horses a couple of times. You be careful you don't stump your toe.
I tailed it out when the screeching and shooting started. That's probably the last of them. Find my boots, will you? My feet are all cut up from waltzing around on these rocks. Find your own boots. I shook mine to sneak up on them engines. Thought you was an old Indian scout. Yeah, but these ain't old Indians we're scouting. Come on, we'll both look for them. Well, we'll be leaving you soon, Gene. I got to turn off this side of Apache Springs. You'd save a lot of time by going right through town. Yeah, sure could, but who ever heard of taking a trail herd right plumb through a town? Mr. Colton, somebody went a way out to keep you from getting this herd through. My guess is he can be found in Apache Springs. By pushing the herd right through town, that'd show him you're not stepping aside for anybody or anything. Sort of give him an idea that I mean business, is that it? That's it. Go ahead, Dad. <laughs> I told you she was the go-ahead kind, didn't I? Done if I don't do it. Come on, let's tell the boys. through saw it. He's the one I think he is, he did. You remember the man the steer surrounded? Yeah. That's him. <laughs> His name's Raidler. Keep an eye on him. Raidler? I won't forget that. Now, what you've done for me, either. Be seeing you. Good luck. Hi, Jing. Is that your new cow outfit? Oh, no. Shadrach and I were out scouting the range and ran into a rustler's raid. We helped Colton bring them in. Rustlers? Uh, I thought some of the punchers said they were Indians. They were. But whether they're white or Indians, stealing cattle's rustling, isn't it? <laughs> it always has been. How's your outfit coming along? Fine. We ran into some mighty fine rangeland just beyond Hidden Valley where Colton plans to run. I'm figuring on buying a herd and moving in. Gene, this is a big country. There's a lot of it where you can run cattle easier and longer than you can around here. Is that a warning, Johnny? Could be, Gene. Could be. Now, what in Tunk it was all that? It's just the kid's way of saying that we're working up to get shot. Well, they ain't gonna shoot me on an empty stomach. It gives me gas. Let's go eat. We'll take care of the horses first. Audrey story checks. So far, what do you got against him? He laughed at me out there in the street before all those filthy cattle. So did I. So did the whole town. That is not the same thing. You, you are my friend, and those people, peasants. But this man, Audrey, laughter from him, I will not take. And what are you going to do about it? I'm going to kill him. Kurt, there are a couple of things about Audrey I think you ought to know before you go gunning for him. He won't scare, and he won't back down. I've soldiered on him, and I know. 
And he's as quick as a coil snake with a six-shooter. Are you afraid of him? I've never actually ripped off a scalp, yet. But if I ever do, it'll be yours. Now go on out and let Arthur make a jackass of you. Yes? Permit me to introduce myself. I am Kurt Riva, formerly Lieutenant Imperial Austrian Hussars and late Major a regular Confederate Cavalry. You mean the guerrillas? It is my purpose to provoke you to a challenge. But uh, if I slap your face, you will beat me with your fists. I am not a boxer. And I'm not a duelist, Raidler. Only my friends call me Raidler. My rank is Major. I know how rank you are. You insulting swine. Pick up your gun from the bartender and the four aces. And let me give you some advice. Four words of advice. Go back to Austria. It's safer. You want any part of this, Johnny? Not this time, Gene. It's not my fight, yet. Why didn't you plug him? You may have to one of these days. You know, that Raidler, he's a peculiar duck, but I guess all them Australians is that way. Austrians. Oh, have it your way. Let's eat. Gene, I've been thinking about that Australian. Austrian. Well, have it your way, but after showing him up the way you did, he ain't gonna be too easy to get along with. That's just the way I want it. When a man's mad, he doesn't think straight. He makes mistakes. And I want Raider to make a couple of mistakes. Well, I only hope he don't mistake your back for your front. Well, I'll be. I was told you live here. The door was unlocked, so I just walked in. Make yourself at home, Lieutenant. You better drop that, Lieutenant. You out of the Army? Oh, no. On detached service. You see, after you left the post, I, I had a long talk with Major Farrell. He, well, he sort of straightened me out on a lot of things. Maybe this will explain it. Excuse me. This is very flattering, Mason. By the way, what do they call you out of uniform? Randy. From now on, it's Randy and Gene. I don't care what you call Shadrach. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> oh, yes, I do, too. <laughs> You've let yourself in for quite a detail. Maybe I better bring you up to date. May I interrupt? Why, certainly. I want you to know that anything you tell me to do, I'll try to get done. But before we start, there's one thing I'd like to settle. What's that? I want to be sure it wasn't just an accident when you whipped me in Major Farrell's office. All right, Randy. Stay out of the way, Shadrach. Oh, no, fellas, not again. No. No, wait now, wait a minute. Now, somebody's going to get hurt, and it might be me. Get hurt? What'd 
you hit him for? Not him, you. I was going to belt you because you tore down my tack-up women. Don't tell him. Don't ever tell him. He'll chase me clean to Canada and back to Mexico. I won't, Shabak. Hey, that's quite a punch you got there, Randy. You have to show it to me sometime. I'll try to. Melody. Howdy, Miss Melody. You've been listening to any fire devils lately? <laughs> no, Shadrach. And I haven't been thumped in the head with a thimble either. <laughs> I want you to meet a friend of mine, Randy Mason. How do you do, Miss Melody? Oh, I'm glad to know a partner of Jean's. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't get a chance to shake hands with many pretty girls out here. Oh, that's all right. From your grip, I'd say you pack quite a punch. He does. <laughs> Is your dad around? No, he's running a drift fence down by the creek. I'll ride with you. May I help you up? Oh, certainly. It's right nice of Austria to get her out of there. I don't like killing women, but we couldn't have any witnesses. Well, there isn't anybody there now. Jim Colton around? Why, no, they're running a fence down by the creek. Anything I can do for you? How about a cup of coffee? Sure, there's always a job around a cow camp. Step down, I'll heat it up for you. All right, let's go to work. Bring me that axe. Bring me that axe. Use it on the shack. Over here. Only one shot, Jean. It's probably just the cook taking a crack at a jackrabbit. I think we'd better take a look. All right, boys, you get the shack, you get the tent, Red. Rocky, get the wagon. Sure helps. I ain't never seen anything like it for burning. Gene, look! Look!
bad? Not very. Which side? Left. Good. I always did have a cow lick on that side. Maybe this will cure it. This means we begin all over again. I guess you think I'm a big baby for bawling like this. You want to know what I really think? <gasps> yes. I think you've got more courage than most men would have at a time like this. You're perfectly willing to start all over again. Most men wouldn't be. Thanks, Randy. Melody. I know we've only just met, but... Shadrach! Shadrach, you're hurt! Oh, shucks, Miss Melody, I, I got gouged up worse than this trying to get the right change in the bar room. Let me have your handkerchief. I know I got one. I keep my eating tobacco wrapped in it. Oh, Shadrach, you goose. Come on. When Shadrach went down, I quit. But I recognized one of them. Stand still. There, you listen to me. Hmm? Nope. That melody's quite a gal. Your dad says she's the go-ahead type, too. She sure is. She sure is. Folks, us Coltons ain't been here long, but we aim to be here for a long while. You all know what they try to do to me. They try to raid me out and burn me out. Nobody asked you to come here. No, but I'm here, mister, and I'm staying here. They say the first man that gets to his holster wins in Apache Springs. They say you make your own law here. And we're going to keep it that way. Yeah, we're yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Better leave it alone, Colton. You're fighting with something that's bigger than you are. It ain't bigger than us honest folks if we band together. If this is where you make your own law, all right. Then let us make some. Who's going to enforce them? We will. We'll form a vigilante committee. They did it in California and it worked. <laughs> this ain't California, is it? No. 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 Hey, no. Oh, we don't like the way we do, go back to California. Then take it lying down and live in fear the rest of your lives. I won't. Maybe you won't have long to live. All right. All right. If you want to be run by thieves and killers, I'll go it alone. I ain't afraid of them. Well, yeah, looks like I failed, Keen. I told you you would, Jim. You're not ready for it yet. Later and the Apache kid have too big an edge. But it was a good try. You're a good man. What are you gonna do now? Stick it out, like I said. I already got enough stuff to start my new camp. I'm having my lumber cut from my new buildings. I'd start loading my camp stuff right now if I wasn't short-handed. Shadrach will help you. So will Randy. Well, that Randy better get used to working with me. Seems like he's getting closer to the family every day. Come on, Shadrach. Get in the habit of watching my back a little closer. I knew you'd been set up for it. 
This was the best way to do it because it squares us for the day you hit town. I wanted to do that. Why? So there will be no debt between us because I will kill you myself next time you get in my way. So it's your fight now, huh? It's my fight. So be it. So be it. on the way. 300 rifles and 100 pistols with a wagon load full of ammunition. Oh, that's all I've been waiting for. How are they coming? They're taking the Silver River Trail and turning south at Sandy Crossing, across the desert to Soma Shack. We'll cache the arms there until we're ready to distribute them. I take them to Soma's place. That's close to town. The closer, the better. It'll seem like a legitimate freight outfit coming into Apache Springs. No wandering cavalry patrols will even question it. Then I've got to start Soma with a message to the village. My warriors have been attacking every outfit on the desert south of Sandy Crossing. If I don't warn them, they'll attack our own train. Better get at it, then. Sandy Crossing. Yewa, yewa, tika. Atetina, ucha, okuka, te. Ah, go in his tetanica. Soma? Sagigi ha, Apache kid. Janatina. Yiki ya, wina. Sidi tia. Mina, a momonas, sandy crossing. Nakayet tanjule pashi kid. Sigigi ha, ho Apache kid. Ah, Apashalina. Redle. Unihe yona. like that, Lamb. The Apache kid's around town, and I don't want to attract his attention. Get your clothes on. We've got a job for both of them. Apache kid can't even let a man sleep. It's the Apache kid, all right. I followed him to a shack about five miles out of town. An Indian by the name of Soma lived there. I figured the kid was using his own name, Corday, for a password, and when I rode in, I tried it, and it worked. I told this Indian the kid had sent me for some men for a special job, and he said he'd be there. Soma said the job wouldn't be ready until the guns arrived. They're coming by the way of Sandy Crossing in the desert. The kid was sent in Soma to warn his own warriors not to attack the train. Randy, you pound letter to Major Farrell. Tell him to get every available trooper to Apache Springs to avoid a massacre. The distance is too great for him to stop the train, but maybe I can. How? The real chiefs don't want this. They know the kid's running guns is the cause of it. If I can get to them, they'll wipe out that train. And if you don't get to them? Then your grandchildren will read about the Battle of Apache Springs. Because if I know the kid, the first thing he'll do is destroy this whole town. What about Melody? I thought about her, too. Shadrach? Yeah. Ride out to Jim Colton's and stay there. At the first sign of trouble, bring every available hand into Apache Springs. You can make your fight with the troops Randy brings in. I'd better make some smoke talk. Now hurry up, you two. Good luck, man.
say, Gene, I, uh... You what? I'm in a hurry. Well, you know, you stand a pretty good chance of not riding out of this mess you're riding into. You always take that chance when you play with Indians. Well, I ain't that, but... But what? What are you getting at? Well, it's about that last fight you had with the lieutenant. What about it? He didn't knock you out. He didn't? No, I did. You did? Sure, with the leg of a chair. I was going to take a belt at him because he tore down my tack-up women, but I miscued. I didn't want you riding off to get shot at thinking he knocked you out. Shucks, Gene, he never could knock you out. Thanks, Shadrach. Now forget it and ride out to Colton's place. Sure. Take care of yourself. I will. <laughs> We made it, champ. They are shocking you, my Samolata Apache kid. I don't wake my mom of my Apache to get soldado. The Asho Coco Dia here, Sandy Cross. Bessinaga de Bellicona. Nina Aute Bote Bellicono, Wawana. Kuanape. Oh, Kuanape. Now it's a psychotatua. The highest coach, Mike Chaco. Nana He. Nana, 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 Nana,
Hello, Kurt. Hiya, kid. What about the wagon trains? There isn't any wagon trains. We're wiped out last night. Wiped out? Cavalry? Indians. But I thought Soma... Soma got through all right. They weren't my warriors. Autry tricked the information out of Soma and took it to the chiefs. They attacked the wagons. Autry. Always Autry. I arranged to have him killed and you shoot a man to prevent it. And now... I had to do that. There's some things you don't understand. I understand one thing. And that is that Autry has destroyed everything we have tried to do. He has beaten us at every turn. But for this man, Autry, we could be living like kings. And now, we have to flee like common thieves. Didn't you ever make a mistake? Yes. Yes, I made one great mistake that I will regret all the rest of my life. And that is the day that I took you into my confidence and into my plans. Look, Rachel. Shut up, you fool, you stupid savage. Savage. Once too often. Captain Autry, I've heard a lot about you. I 
across Captain Wallace's trail on the way to the fort. Now, we're the replacements for Major Farrell. Mason convinced me that you needed help over here pretty bad, so we detoured. We did need it. Yes, sir, those blue coats look mighty good again. What about this wagon train of guns? Well, you can forget about that now. If you can delay an hour or two, I'll have a full report you can take to Major Farrell. Glad to. I'll look you up as soon as I find a temporary camp for my men. Good. Gee, you must mean that you... Randy! <laughs> There ain't nothing like a little worryment over a man to tell a gal whose kid she's going to have. <laughs> Shadrach, I thought I told you to stay at Colton's. So you did, but when Miss Melody seen the whole army heading this way, she just lit out for town. She's the go-ahead kind, you know. Gene, Melody and I want you to be the first to know that we're going to get married. I planned it that way all along. You'll get my blessings later. Shadrach? Yeah? Take Melody over to our house and make her comfortable. Randy and I have some business to settle. Come on, sis. <laughs> yeah, Jean? Remember me? I'm the fellow you were going to show that punch to. Gosh, Gene, I, I... As Major Farrell would say, stop stuttering. Shadrach told me all about it. He did? He did? Yeah, he did. And in case you forgot how your punch goes, I'll show you how mine goes. It might come in handy sometime in case you want to beat your wife. Who says I want to beat my wife? I said in case you... <laughs> Nobody can say I'm going to beat my wife. <laughs> 